Today's video is a little bit of a different video because I'm taking you behind the scenes in my life and share with you my experience of cyclical living. I want to explain to you what cyclical living is and then show you how I'm doing it, how I've implemented it in my life. I'm going to share with you why I've decided to do this and also some of the benefits that I'm seeing. And I hope that you can make enough sense of this if you've been interested in cyclical living, if you've heard about it, but you don't really know how it works. I'm a very practical person, so I've tried to make it very practical for myself and I just want to take you through my process. I thought the best way for me to explain um, to you how I'm doing cyclical living or uh, incorporating it it into my lifestyle is with my wonderful whiteboard behind me, my flip chart. So I've created some, some charts for you that I'm going to take you through. But before I show you how to do it on a practical level or how I'm doing it rather, I wanted to just share with you and talk you through a little bit of why I've decided to do this. So as you will see from my videos, if you've been following me along, um, I've been on a journey of embracing my feminine energy this past year. And this has really come as a result of me feeling burnout, overwhelmed, depressed, struggling with chronic pain. And it all came because I was pushing too much from my masculine energy. So I was basically, you know, a lot of the time walking around cut off at the head. I think a lot of us do this, obviously, the way that the world is set up. It's set up in such, such a way that masculine energy is the driver there's a lot of focus on achieving there's a lot of focus on achievement and yes we need our masculine energy but we also need the feminine we need the yin and the yang we need that balance we need that union of energies and one of the ways that I've awakened my feminine energy one of the ways that I'm really embracing that and, and embodying it is by following my menstrual cycle and also by following the yearly cycle and they're actually pretty similar which I'm going to show you just now and what I found is it has allowed me to slow down so that is one of the biggest things one of the biggest lessons that I've learned and that I'm still learning is to slow myself down I'm a type well I should actually say I was a type A personality always pushing always driving as a highly sensitive person, um, you know, always overthinking, spending a lot of time deeply processing information. I'm an empath, so feeling and taking on a lot of emotions of other people. So I had to come to a point where I needed to slow myself down, where I needed to be able to draw strong boundaries and where I could actually come back to myself. And this is one of the ways in which I'm doing this. So let me take you through how these cycles work then and you can then see for yourself if this is something that you want to try out. So I've created this wheel that represents both the cycles of the year and our um, moon cycle or our menstrual cycle as women. And I think what is important just to mention at, at this point is the way that we have been conditioned to operate is regular emotions, regular moods, regular everything, same amount of energy, 365 days of the year. And that simply isn't possible for us as women because we have a hormonal cycle of 28 days. Our hormones do this. Our moods do this. Our emotions do this. And if we reject that, if we are trying to just be the same every day, we start seeing our emotions, our moods, our bloatedness, our PMS. We start seeing all of these things as a liability. We buy into the societal norms to say that, you know, at certain times of the month, women are so volatile and that it's something to be ashamed of or that's something that's really a problem. And we reject our own essence in the process. So it's really important when you begin to work with your feminine energy, when you really embrace that part of yourself, is to allow for all of these moods and all of these fluctuations to happen. What you're also going to find is once you start 
living in accordance with these cycles, you are going to perform better um, in the sense that you are optimally aligning yourself with your body's energy. So you are, are going to be able to plan, which is the masculine part, you're going to be able to plan what to do when so that it is in alignment with where you are in your cycle, not only in your menstrual cycle, but also in the yearly cycle. Okay, so let me take you through this and I'll see if I can make sense of it on paper the same way that I'm seeing it inside my head. So we have our menstruation cycle, we have the follicular cycle, I think that's how you pronounce it, ovulation, and then luteal. These four cycles of our menstruation aligns with the four seasons of the year. So menstruating is our inner winter, follicular is our inner spring, ovulation is our inner summer, and the luteal phase is our inner autumn. Now obviously the seasons of the year are quite clear because we've got 12 months, four seasons, so it's basically three months per season, so that's easy enough. Three months of autumn, three months of winter, three months of spring, and three months of summer. And this is good to know once you start um, doing reflections and I don't want to say planning and goal setting, it's more like intention setting, reflection and intention setting throughout the year. So you basically work in three month brackets. But in terms of our menstrual cycle, it's going to be different for different women. So in essence, your menstruation, the menstrual, um, the time while you are bleeding, that can be anything from three to seven days. When you are in your follicular stage, this can be anything from seven to 10 days. Ovulation can be anything from three, oh, I hope you can see that, can be anything from three to four days. And then your luteal stage can be anything from 10 to 14 days, okay? And this makes up the amount of your cycle. So not everyone is on a 28-day cycle. Some women have a 30 or a 32-day cycle. Some women have a 21-day cycle. So the first thing that you need to do if you want to start working with your cycle and start incorporating it into your lifestyle is first take a month or two to see how many days are you in cycle. So are you on a 21 day cycle? Are you on a 28 day cycle? And usually if you are taking birth control, then you will be on a 28 day cycle. So that's what you will work with then. Once you then know exactly the length of your cycle, you can begin to predict when are you going to menstruate? When are you going to be in your follicular? When are you going to ovulate? And when are you going to be in luteal? And then you begin to plan your month or even your week. Like that's what I do. I do my weekly planning on a Friday. And because I know where I am in my cycle, I also know what to put into my plan for the next week. So that's what you begin to do. Let me now just take you a little bit into deep, deeper into what do you do then in the different sections. So we're starting again on winter and winter is typically a time for rest. So when you are menstruating, this is a time to rest your body. This is a time to reflect. This is a time to review. What happens in your body hormonally is your left and your right hemispheres are in sync. So it's really a good time for your brain to work together. So you, you are able to do that review. You are able to do that assessment. You want to do activities such as walking or yoga. So really very gentle kind of activities that's not strenuous. You want to tune into your intuition you want to connect into your inner wisdom. So this is really these aspects of you that are going to be easier for you to tap into and rely on when you're menstruating and also when it's winter. So when you start doing your quarterly review or your seasonal review, you will do activities that have to do with reflection and 
um, looking back at where you have come from. You're not going to take on new projects. Also, when you're menstruating, you're not starting with big new projects that are very demanding. This is really at the end of the cycle. Then we move into spring, which is the follicular, and this is where the rebirth happens. So think of your, think yourself of spring, all of this new green leaves everywhere, everything feels alive, there's a lightness in the air, there's like a, a charge, so we're starting to, to feel more alive, we're starting to feel more active. So hormonally, you're open to new things, all right? So this is the start of the creative juices are starting to flow now. You've had time to connect into what it is that you want to create, what it is um, that's important to you, and now you can step into the creation thereof. So in terms of activities, the type of activities that you will do is you're going to do things that are more invigorating, uh, things that can really start to use this energy of yours that's starting to come alive. This is also a time of planting, all right? If you think about spring, it's a time of planting. So here you are beginning to create the intentions. You're going to sow the seeds for what it is that you want to co-create in your life. You're going to tend to your garden. You're going to weed out all of those things that don't serve you. So again, a space to declutter. It's a space for you to... Um, move your energy. It's a space for you to start to let go of things. So in your work, this is the best time to start working on your projects to really begin to bring them into fruition, to do a lot of planning, to do a lot of visionary work is what you can do over here. Then moving along with the cycle, we're moving into summer, which is really the growth cycle. So this is when you're ovulating hormonally your verbal and your social centers are on fire. I'm ovulating right now so it's the best time for me to be making videos because I have, I feel like I have a lot to say and I really feel connected so I'm using that energy. Also a big thing that we want to do in summer because if you think about the summer season everything, things are growing, things are becoming lush, they're becoming ripe so this is a time to celebrate Okay, it's a time to celebrate and it's a time to play. It's a time to be joyous. So in your reflection, when it comes to the, the summer solstice reflection, some of the intentions that you can put there for yourself is how can I play more? And it's a space for you to also do a little bit of shadow work. And if you want to know more about shadow work, you can watch this video up here which I'll link for you up here also in the description below, where I talk all about shadow work and how we can use that to really unlock um, our personal power. So it's a time here that you can dive into some shadow work by asking yourself, where do I sabotage play in my own life? How do I prevent myself from celebrating? Where do I stop myself from fully emerging and um, em em immersing, from fully immersing myself and really enjoying uh, everything that life has to offer me. And then we move into autumn or our luteal phase. This is the harvesting phase. So now what's happening is all of the things that you've been creating and tending to and allowing to grow, it's now ready to harvest. So hormonally, you're very good with your attention to detail. It's a time for you to complete projects. So start to bring things to the end. And harvesting is also a time of releasing. Okay, it's a time of letting go so that we can move into our rest cycle. So when you are then on the autumn equinox, you can start reflecting about things. You can look back onto your life to see, okay, all of the things that I've been planting over here, how has that developed? Where am I, have I come from? You can reflect on where am I now? What is it that I'm busy harvesting? And then what can I release moving into, into my rest phase so that I can then start to rebirth 
something new in its place. And a lot of this information, the hormonal side of how we can align with our menstrual cycle. I've taken this from the book from Elisa Vitti called In the Flow. It's a fabulous book if you, if you want to start working with your cycle. So if you are, or rather if you've been curious about working with cyclical um, living or getting you know, started on cyclical living, then I hope my explanation of how I do it has been helpful to you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, then let me know in the comments below as well. I'll be happy to share that with you. Please share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful and interesting. And if you still haven't subscribed, then I invite you with a big open heart to join us. We would love to have you as part of our community.